Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So you might have heard this from multiple people multiple times before that we will all start using AI to develop better products in future. Recently, I have seen that in reality. So I was at KubeCon India and I was exploring different project booths. I came across two DevOps AI based startups, which were very, very interesting and they have really impressed me. One is based on observability using AI and other is based on FinOps. Both of them are AI based startups and both of them promise to reduce the cost of the organization in the observability space and FinOps space respectively. In this video, I want to share with all of you what are those two projects and why did I really like those projects? It's going to be a detailed explanation and this video might help you understand what kind of applications are we going to deal with in future, whether it is in the space of observability, whether it is in the space of CICD or it is in the space of FinOps. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Cool. So what are those startups? The first one is Odil.ai. So Odil.ai is an AI based observability startup, which aims at reducing the observability cost by 90%. And when someone says me that I can reduce the observability cost by 90%, I will instantly say that it's not possible. So that made me walk to their project booth and I had a discussion with their CTO to understand, okay, what is the architecture change that they have taken to achieve this number? Because there are a lot of observability platforms like Datadog, Dynatrace, New Relic, if they cannot achieve it, how can a observability startup do it? That is where I came across two key differentiators. Now I feel that these two key differentiators may help Odil.ai achieve this 90% cost reduction. The first key differentiator is that Odil.ai has replaced the time series database. So if you look at any monitoring applications, like for example, if you take Prometheus. So Prometheus scrapes metrics from the metric server and they collect these metrics and they store that in a time series database. Now this time series database can be connected to a percent volume on a Kubernetes cluster. Depending upon your storage class, you get assigned with a volume. What Odil.ai has done is they replace this time series database with S3 bucket. We all know S3 buckets are known for cheaper storage solutions. So replacing a time series database with object store like S3 bucket can significantly reduce the observability costs. Now I felt this is a very interesting architectural change because if you look at observability platforms and the amount of data that they collect at an enterprise like Amazon or at an enterprise like uh, let's say a financial organization, there is huge amount of data that's coming in. So Prometheus scrapes all the data, puts that into a volume. So it's a huge cost. Whether you are taking a SaaS offering of the observability platform, let's say you have SaaS offering of New Relic or you have a SaaS offering of Dynatrace, Datadog, they charge you based on the volume of the data. So they charge you more because the cloud providers charge them more. Odil.ai 
replacing this volumes or time series database with S3 bucket, they get charged less from the cloud provider. AWS does not charge you. Let's say you are using EBS. So AWS does not charge you more for S3 buckets. But if you're using EBS volume, AWS would definitely charge you more. So this is where Odil.ai in step one has achieved some level of cost reduction and the step two or another architectural change that they have taken is going serverless. Imagine you're using Prometheus. Okay, you have posted Prometheus on a cloud virtual machine. You don't use this Prometheus API server all day. Like you don't go to the Prometheus query server. You don't write PromQL queries 24 hours within the day, right? Maybe you might use it for 60 minutes in the day, but you are paying the cloud provider because there is compute that is involved and you might be using a virtual machine or something. So cloud providers are going to charge you for this. What Odil.ai has done is instead of using the virtual machines, they have started using serverless functions. So these serverless functions are only triggered when someone writes a PromQL query or when someone tries to execute a query to retrieve some metrics related information. So this is second approach they have taken to reduce the cost. By taking both of these architectural changes, Odil.ai promises 90% cost reduction. Now you might ask me, but Abhishek, is it possible? I'm not 100% sure if they can achieve this 90% cost reduction because it's still a startup and someone needs to try it at enterprise scale. This is a promise or this is a claim that Odil.ai makes as of today. But if not 90% looking at the architectural design, I'm very sure they can introduce cost reduction in your organization. Of course, there are some cons as well. The first thing is Odil.ai at this point of time does not implement tracing. So today, I mean, as of today, you can only use it with metrics as well as logs, the two pillars of observability. And the third pillar of observability that is tracing is yet to be introduced into the platform or they need to put that into their observability platform. And this is not a con, but someone needs to test it at huge scale. So at a huge scale, when we are talking about millions of data, can Odil.ai perform better by taking this architectural changes? Because time series databases are very fast. Now, can they retrieve the information from S3 bucket at the same pace? Or is, is there going to be any latency that is involved? Similarly, serverless functions, they take some time to start. Is it going to affect the performance of the platform? This is something yet to be tested. Overall, this is a very nice idea that I wanted to share. Going ahead, we might see other observability platforms also taking this or trying to introduce these kind of options into their platform. If you want to try Odil.ai like I did, you can use their playground environment. Just go to Odil.ai and click on the try Odil playground. And their playground is connected with a demo cluster and it also has data that you can play with. So you can get a nice look and feel of the platform. And if in your organization, you are leading observability, and maybe if you are trying to introduce observability into your organization, you can definitely give it a try. Now, let's go to the second one. Okay, so this was 
observability solution using AI. Now, what is the other startup that I really loved? So the other one is Cast AI. Again, a AI based startup, but something which is in the FinOps space. FinOps itself is a very fascinating space because every organization end of the day is worried about their cloud costs. Is there any organization that is not worried about their cloud costs? Is there any organization that lets their developers, DevOps engineers create endless resources on cloud? No. So every organization wants to optimize their cloud costs and that is where FinOps is gaining a lot of significance. Unfortunately, there are a lot of FinOps tools in the market, but most of them only get struck at the budgeting as well as reporting part. Whereas this AI based startup called Cast AI, it introduces AI into the FinOps solution and the AI models that they have, or they, they also use some existing AI models and using these AI models, it looks at your Kubernetes cluster, it looks at your cloud, it looks at the unused resources and one is it can notify, definitely. Second, it can also correct. That means, let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster with 10 different nodes and one of the node is only 10% utilized in terms of CPU as well as memory. What Cast AI can do, it is capable of identifying such nodes. It is capable of shifting the workloads, that is pods from this node to the other nodes and completely drain this node and remove the node. So overall, you get saved on the complete node cost that you are bearing before. So it can take such decisions and it can also notify you. Yeah, overall, it's a very interesting uh, platform. Again, they also have a playground environment, which is connected with a Kubernetes cluster. You can simply sign in using a GitHub account or your email address, and you can explore the platform. I explored Cast AI. I connected Cast AI with my EKS cluster, and it was able to provide a lot of insights. Not only about the stale resources, but it was also giving recommendations about the spot instances. It was giving information about Graviton, ARM support. So, yeah, I would definitely try uh, Cast AI more. And I'm planning to also do a end to end demonstration on Cast AI. Recently, I did a video on FinOps. So, as continuation to that, I was also looking at different platforms like Cloudability, uh, I was looking at the AWS Cost Explorer. Cast AI seems to be the perfect one that I was looking for. So I'm going to do a end-to-end -end demonstration of Cast AI with EKS clusters, maybe sometime this week or later. So I hope you also found this AI-based DevOps startups very fascinating. This is how the future is going to be where you might see a lot of startups or you might see MNCs coming up with AI of solutions or AI with DevOps. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Definitely let me know if you like this video where I try to break down the architecture. I try to provide you information about AI related DevOps platforms. If you want more of such videos, also comment below more and I am going to do more such videos. See you all. Take care. Bye-bye.